Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to see how we can train machine learning models using CPU multi-cores. Now this is an important video guys, because there is one specific parameter inside machine learning algorithms, which we just normally use, but we actually don't know the exact meaning of that. And uh, because of that, many of my subscribers have asked that particular question, even though they have asked this question in my telegram group also. And for that purpose, I'm planning to make this particular video. Now, first of all, uh, know one thing that guys, if you really want to check how many CPU cores you actually have, this CPU cores are very much important. Uh, this cores are also important in deep learning when you're working with GPUs, right? Because of that, parallel programming, parallel execution of the programming will be possible. Now, if you want to see that how many cores you have in your uh, desktop or a laptop first of all just go and open my computer so here you'll be able to see my computers just go and see the properties inside this properties you can see that in my machine I am having 16 core processor now, some of the people will be having 8 core processor mm -hmm. right some of the people may have 4 core processor but in my system it has 16 core processor and along with that you will also have 32 threads so parallel processing is possible in this and similarly if we really want to fashion our machine learning model training we can use this course whenever you have a huge data set for training our models right so in this particular video i'll try to show you that by using cpu multi cores and then we'll try to see that how the performance gets improved with respect to training of our model. So for this particular problem statement, we are going to take the wine quality data set. So wine quality data set is this specific data set. I think everybody knows uh, about this particular data set. So in this data set, you have all these particular features and based on that, you have a quality score that is between zero and 10, right? So this is basically a classification problem. It can also be considered as a regression problem uh, and it is up to you like how you actually want to solve. The reason I have taken this particular data set because the data set is quite simple and I wanted to show you the main thing that how we can run this particular program with CPU multi cores, right? So that is the main purpose. So I've taken a simple data set. And one more thing that I wanted to tell you about it is guys, if you really want to test this particular example, please make sure that you have a good size of the data set. Now in this particular case, let's see how, what is the size of the one wine quality data set itself. And as you all know, also guys, we cannot use GPU uh, to train our machine learning models, but yes, Nvidia has come up with something called as Rapids AI that will allow the machine learning models to be trained in GPUs, right? So you should know this core multi-core concept. It will be very, very important for you. Now, first of all, I'm going to import the pandas and then I have downloaded the data set from this particular website. You know, you just have to go and click in the download section. Where is the data set? So here you can see the data folder and you can download this particular data set, you know, with respect to anyone, right? Uh, uh, so that particular data set you can actually use. And I have the data set over here. I've downloaded wine quality white.csv so i'm going to take this particular example from this you can see white.csv is there you can take reds it's fine now once you take this i'm going to read this particular data set make sure that you use this separator symbol like this because the data that is present inside this is separated by this particular symbol right now in this particular data set you can see that the output feature is your quality and remaining your independent features are the remaining features that we saw right now the next thing that we are going to do let me just zoom out okay uh, yeah I'm going to basically check out what is the data quality like in this output feature how many unique categories I have just to check it out I'll just trying to see so these all are the unique categories that are present in the output features if you want to see the shape you can see that they are approximately around 5000 records so I think that with this we will be at least able to verify if you are going to use some maximum number of cores uh, obviously the time will reduce right now, apart from that you also have 12 features over here so this is basically your df dot head right now uh, in this uh, this code is actually helping you to get the dependent features. So I'm just going to write the code over here. Get the dependent features, right? It's pretty much simple. All I'm doing is that I'm reading all the uh, features and skipping the last one by this, okay? And here you'll be able to see that this is my Y feature. That is the output feature over here. And again, if I really want to see Y dot head, you'll be able to see it over here, 
right? So this is my y dot head and uh, coming to the execution now. Now what I'm going to do is that first of all, uh, in this, I'm just going to say some of the steps. First of all, I'm going to assign, I'll just write it down. I will be using a machine learning algorithm. So in the first step, I'll be using a machine learning algorithm like random forest, machine learning algo like a random forest, right? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to also use, um, I think I've used repeated stratified K fold uh, for the cross validation. And then with the help of cross val score, you know, we will try to train the model. Okay. So with the cross val score, we'll try to train the model. Now, when we are initializing all these things, the time that will be calculated will be calculated based on this cross val score, right? So we are going to check it out inside this cross val score, how much time it is taking with different, different cores. Now where I will be specifying the core parameter and all you just wait for some time. Okay. Now, first of all, I'm just going to import uh, from time, import time so that I'll be able to calculate the time. Then I have from scalon.model selection, import repeated stratified K fold. Then I have ensemble techniques, which I'm going to import a random forest classifier. And I'm going to use a cross val score so that I'll be able to do the cross validation. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do over here is that I'm just going to take the start underscore time. And instead of writing over here, I'll just paste it over here, right? So what, what, it actually does let's see uh, not here also let me see so I'll just remove this and after the CV code I'm going to use it now see now first step is that in the line six the, what we have done is that we have initialized a random forest classifier and inside this we have used n underscore estimates is equal to 100 now if I press shift tab okay uh, first of all let me just execute this in my above cell so that will be easy for me now, if I press shift tab over here in random forest, in random forest, you have a parameter which is called as n underscore jobs. Now, this is the parameter which will actually help you to basically assign that how many cores should this particular training take from your system. Suppose if you say n underscore jobs is equal to one, that basically means that it is going to just use one core of the CPU, right? If you say two, then it is going to take the two cores. If you say three, then it is going to take three. If you say four, then it is going to take four. If you say five, it is going to take five, right? That depends on how many number of cores you have, right? In my system, I have 16 cores. So what I'll do, I'll specify 16. Suppose if you want to specify, use all the cores and you don't have to check that how many cores you have, you can also use minus one, right? But one thing, remember guys, the reason I have not written the code over here, right? I'm not going to write the n underscore jobs over here. Instead, I'll be writing that n underscore jobs inside my cross val score because cross val score helps us to do the cross validation with this repeated stratified K fold. So I'll not write it over here, but suppose if you're not doing cross validation, you can specify your n underscore jobs over here. And in the next statement, you can write model dot fit x comma y. So something like this. Suppose I'll say n underscore jobs is equal to two. And then I'll say model dot fit with your X and Y, right? X and Y. So like this, you can also write, but in our case, we are going to do a cross validation and then we are going to see the time. So I'm just going to remove this. Uh, I'm going to remove this because I don't require it over here. And here we go. Now, what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to use a stratified uh, K fold and here the number of splits will be five uh, splits. And with respect to each split, there'll be three repetitions and I've selected some random state value. And then finally, you'll be able to see that I have started my timer right? The timer needs to be calculated in this where my model is getting, getting trained with my independent feature. These are my independent features. Apart from the last feature, all the features are my independent feature over here. And this is my Y feature, right? My dependent feature. Then the scoring parameter that I'm going to use is accuracy. Then the cross validation technique that I'm going to use is basically repeated stratified K fold. And as said, I'm going to use n underscore jobs is equal to one just to assign it as one CPU core. It should be one CPU core, right? Perfect. So one CPU core, right? Now let's see after this, what I'm doing, I'm using n underscore time is equal to time. So I'm just going to give you the parameter over here, guys, for CPU cores, we use, we use uh, n underscore job, right? n underscore jobs. So here you can see n underscore jobs, right? Then I'm ending my time and then I'm printing my end time minus start time, 
right? So this is what I've done. So I'm just going to execute it over here and let's see how much time it gets trained by just using one core. And obviously there are so many records, there are so many iterations that we are going to do. You can also increase the number of iteration to see the exact work. So here you can see with the help of one core, I'm actually getting somewhere around 9.63 seconds. And that's a huge time guys, <laughs> 9.63 seconds. But yes, you have 5,000 records and you're taking so much of time, right? Uh, if I tried to do this with uh, deep learning, it's, it's obviously going to be fast. But in deep learning, we use epochs, iteration and many more things. Now, in the second time, when I'm going to use the same code, okay, I'm going to use the same code. And just let me remove this. I don't want this, okay. And I'm going to use this start underscore time after this, after this step, okay. And then I'm going to use this. And here now, my n underscore jobs will be 2, right? All the other code are exactly same guys. I did not make any change. The thing is that I'm going to now use two CPU cores and I'm going to see whether the time will decrease or not. So if I go and see over here, I've set n underscore jobs is equal to two. And if I sh press shift enter, you'll be able to see that how much time it will take. And obviously it should take less than 9.63 seconds. Now here you can see that it is taking 6.195 seconds. Now similarly, you do with four cores. Uh, in four cores, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove this again. I'm going to make the same changes. My start time should be after this, right? And here is everything. And here my n underscore jobs is four, right? And after this, I will just say print end time minus start time. Now with four cores, I think it should take less time more. Uh, at least less than this. So now it is taking obviously 3.80 seconds. Now it was 6.195. Like this, if you really want to utilize all the core, so what you have to do, so I'm just going to make this change again. I'm going to use this over here. And if I really want to use all the cores, I just have to do minus one. Okay, minus one. Now when I do this, you'll be able to see that. And if I execute it, obviously it is going to take less time. So let's execute it. So after executing, you can see that I'm getting 2.614 seconds by using all my cores, right? So 2.614 seconds, 3.806, 6.195 and 9.63. Now let's try something else. So what I've done over here, I am going to remove again this because I have already imported it. I have written it in multiple times. So now here I'm going to take some examples of course. So I'm saying that, okay, do the iteration with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cores, and then uh, do the cross validation inside n scores, trying to find out the time and print all the time with all the core details, right? That is what I've done for cores this much, timestamp was this much seconds, right? Or training time, you can say training time. Training, training time, right? So training time was this much. So I'm just going to execute that. And remember, I'm just doing a for loop with respect to this many iterations. Now here you'll be observing that, um, you know, as the number of cores will be increasing, you'll be seeing that the training time will be decreasing. So for the core one, you can see that uh, for the core one, for the core two, you can see that it is six, four for core training three, the time was 4.43 for course four training, it was 3.83 yes up to some point definitely it is going to decrease and suddenly if it increases like for core 6 the training time was 3.33 right and then it was 3.35 right i'll tell you why it may have increased because i think for solving your problem statement with just 4000 5000 records i think for course 5 till 4 uh, fifth, till five cores you can actually use. Now you can see that in eight cores it is still decreasing, right? In nine core also it is somewhere around 2.98. So I think after this you probably do not require any more additional cores. So there is a fluctuation in time itself. But yes, if you try to do it like that, you will definitely be able to see it. Okay. So this was an example of using a uh, multi cores, uh, multi CPU cores, you know, and I showed you example, all this particular material will be given in the description of this particular video in the form of GitHub link. I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to the channel and yes, share with all your friends, whoever you require to help. And yes, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all. Bye bye.